The Bhagavad Gita is a book of mankind's collected experience of and answers to life's most basic questions. Who I am? From where do I come? What is my purpose and destiny? And most practically, how do I find happiness? These podcasts originate in the lectures of Neil Bhatt, a disciple of Swami Chinmayananda. They are presented here in 20 to 30 minute segments, each covering three of the Gita's 701 verses. Welcome to Gita Wisdom for Daily Living. We have been discussing Chapter 7, Gnana Vignana Yoga, Yoga of Knowledge and Wisdom. In the last chapter of meditation, Chapter 6, Bhagavan told us that you should meditate upon the nature of the Self, nature of the Supreme Self. But what is the nature of the Supreme Self is now described in Chapter 7 through 12. So Chapter 7 makes the introduction to the nature of the Supreme Self. So Bhagavan opened the chapter by assuring all of us who are listening to him that I will teach you the science and the technique of how a meditator can know me, the Supreme Consciousness, and experience that divine. So that's an assurance that what I'm going to teach you will teach you how to meditate. We discussed meditation in the last chapter. But what to meditate upon, I will teach you now. Not only I'll teach you what to meditate upon, but how to meditate upon that. So that's Bhagavan's assurance to Arjuna. And then right away he described the nature of the Supreme Self as manifested in Eightfold Prakriti. That the world which you see, you can see it in its eightfold manifestation. Five great elements, mind, intellect, and ego. So the five great elements make all the objects in this world, but those objects have no meaning if there is no one to know them. Out of these five great elements only, a mind is created to receive the sensations. So from this five elements, these five corresponding sense organs are at the individual levels. These five sense organs receive sensations from this world of objects outside. The sensations received from these five sense organs are recognized by the mind, which is the central collecting point. So the sensations from the sense organs create perceptions in that receptor or mind. And that perception is interpreted at the intellect level. Now these three, the mind, intellect and the five sense organs, they are all still part of the prakriti. But then comes the ego, which is very essential for all this to function. And the ego is nothing but the self identified with this inert equipment called the body, mind, and intellect. The body represents the five great elements. Mind represents the subtle aspect of the five great elements. And intellect represents even the subtler aspects of those five great elements. When the consciousness identifies with them, it becomes ego, the knower. So Bhagavan said, this whole world of your being comes into existence when this knower comes into existence. And that's my lower prakriti. That prakriti you can feel and perceive and experience through your sense organs. So you and I are experiencing Bhagavan every day in all our perceptions, all our experiences, all our knowledge. But then Bhagavan said, that's my lower prakriti, that's my grosser prakriti, which you can experience. But the higher prakriti is the supreme consciousness, which is pervading all throughout this prakriti, which makes all these beings possible. 
all this experience is possible. So at my level, this consciousness is limited to me and I make that as my self. I call it my life force. Bhagavan said at the universal level that the same consciousness is pervading everywhere and making everything possible. Just as your consciousness creates your world and makes your world possible, the Supreme Consciousness makes all things and beings which you see and perceive possible. Therefore, I am the seed of all things and beings. And Bhagavan said, I am the source of all the things and beings. Bijam Mam Sarva Bhutana. But then he said, all things and beings are strung into me like the pearls in a necklace. In other words, all these things and beings are not independent of each other. They are strung into the same supreme consciousness. So I am the basis for all the perceptions and experiences at all levels by all beings. So these beings which you see or things which I see, we want to, they can be described by their gunas. And those gunas by one describe the sattva, rajas and tamas. They are differentiated. The world of plurality comes into being by the permutation combinations of this guna, this sattva, rajas and tamas. Then he makes a statement which is more like a conundrum. Even though all things and beings proceed from me, but I am not in them, but they are in me. So this is somewhat of a contradictory statement that they have come out of me, they are in me, but I am not in them. And then we understood that the world of plurality is superimposition on the Supreme Self by the mind and intellect of each individual being. Collectively, they see this world as a world of plurality. And as my interface and your interface is the same, that's why you and I see the same world. You and I see the same red color. If the interface is different, then you will see red and I will see green. So Bhagavan said, all these gunas are coming out of me, but they are not in me. They do not exist in consciousness. Bhagavan then continued and said, all beings are confused right from their birth because of these three gunas. The three gunas create maya. Maya, it gives an impression of something existing when there is, it is not there. Or something it is represented in a very different form than its real form. This maya deludes everyone right from their births. So Bhagavan said, a person is deluded by the birth itself. A person only takes birth in the particular existence because of the vasanas, because of the desires to experience something in this world. The Bhagavan had described how the vasanas becomes desires, desires become actions, and then the cycle continues. Actions creates experiences, experiences create more impressions, impressions create more tendencies, tendencies create more vasanas, vasanas create more desires, and cycle continues. As long as I'm caught in that cycle, I'll be taking birth after birth, and as long as I take birth, I'll be confused by this maya. This maya is binding me to experience joys and happiness in this world of objects. So that's basically is the fundamental truth Bhagavan has explained here, why we do not see that fundamental consciousness. And then we continued where Bhagavan had said, even though this manifestation you see, I'm ajaha, I'm unborn and avyayam. I am fundamental. There is no birth for me. There is no beginning for me. I am the fundamental reality. Everything else is emergent reality. Avyayam, and I do not mutate into something else. If I came out of one state of existence, the fundamental reality, then I do not change. The Bhagavan says, I do not change. But people do not recognize me because this maya is veiling their understanding of the Supreme Self. And the goal of your life or the quest of your life is to recognize that Supreme Self. If you want to get out of the sorrows and the world of change, then you need to meditate upon me. And Bhagavan had said, there are four types of people who approach me 
to understand me. There are four types of bhakta, artaha, jignasu, artharthi and gnani. The people who are of not very good actions, they don't even bother to know me because they don't even realize that there is a fundamental reality. But those who realize fundamental reality and they are doing good deeds to purify their mind and intellect, they fall in four different categories. Artaha, someone who is really distressed. Jignasu, one who is curious about this. One is Artharthi, one who wants to gain enough means to achieve this knowledge. And the Gnani, one who has come to know this knowledge. And out of this four, one the Gnani is closer to me. Everyone cannot recognize me because of this Maya. This Maya is creating veiling. And therefore, I am not available to everybody. But those who try to overcome this difficulty, they will know me. So Bhagavan had said in the last couple of verses, Veda aham sam titani vartamanani charjuna bhavishyani cha bhutani mamtu vedana kaschana what will be the outcome if you become identified with him? Bhagavan said, I know all the beings in the past and I know all the beings in the future. I know them all, but they do not know me. But then he said in the next verse, Icha dvesa samuttena dvandva mohena bharata sarva bhutani sammoham sarge yanti prantapa People are deluded right from their birth because of their likes and dislikes which create this duality. The very fact that I see myself separate from this world is the greatest duality. That I and the world are two separate things. Whereas Bhagavan said, Prakriti comes from me, and I am in the Prakriti. Prakriti is one and the same in all beings. So I cannot be different from this world if I am made up of the same material which the world is made up of. But he said, that duality is confusing everyone right from the beginning. But he said, Esam tu antagatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dvandva moha nirmukta bhajante maam dridavrataha The Bhagavan did not say that everyone will be confused all the time. They are deluded from their birth. My real nature is veiled from them. But once said, those men of virtuous deeds, jananam punya karmana, those who are performing good acts, good deeds. Because one who has realized that actions are the means for me to purify my internal instrument, the antakarana. Antakarana is the only instrument I have which will reflect the reality. As long as it is not clear, I will not see it. So the firm basis in Vedanta, I by nature is divine without any impurities. But I do not see it because of the impurities on my equipment, my internal equipment. All I have to do is clean up the internal equipment and I'll be able to see the reality. So Bhagavan said that Jananam Punya Karmanam, those who are striving to achieve that purity, Esamtu Antagatam Papam, those who reach that final goal, that almost clean their mind and intellect, Te Dvandva Moha Nirmuktaha, once they reach that point, they realize that this world and I are not two separate entities. I am not an island by myself. Bhajante maam dradavrataha. They become even much firmer in their meditation on the self. To recognize what is the nature of the self, myself. That which I keep calling myself, what is that? They become even firmer in their pursuit of knowing that self. And then Bhagavan says, Jara marana mokshaya mama yasritya yatantite. You know why that person is doing that? To get over the old age and death. And my age, I really, really recognize. I have to wear hearing aid now and I have my glasses to see and 
constantly something breaking apart and I have to fix it. So Bhagavan said, those who have come to the realize that this world of change is the cause for all my sorrows. I try to find a situation which is comfortable and then I want to lock that in, in my experience. But that is not possible. It constantly changing. The world which I experienced 10 minutes ago has already gone. And now I have to deal with the world which I am dealing right now. So the jara and maran, old age and death, represent all the changes in our life. Jara, maran, moksha. Those who want to get liberated from this world of change, who want to have the permanent base to exist, permanent base to enjoy. He said, Mama Asritya. They realize that the only place it is possible if I take refuge in that supreme reality which does not have any change. Bhagavan has clearly said, I am Ajaha. My very nature as the supreme consciousness is unborn and immutable, unchanged. So the two things I'm looking for in life is a complete existence without any change. It's only possible in that state of existence, the supreme consciousness. Mama, they take refuge in me. Yatanti then they strive and harder to get rid of this identification with the changing body, mind and intellect and identify with that supreme consciousness which is without any change, without any beginning or an end. Te Brahma Tad Viduhu Krishnam Adhyatmam Karma Chakilam. They come to know that Brahman, the supreme reality, the supreme consciousness, which makes my existence possible as well as existence of everything else. Not only they recognize the supreme consciousness, they recognize the Krishnam Adhyatmam. They realize their own self in its totality. The what is it that I call myself? And Karma Chakilam. And also all the accents, all my accents. I now come to realize how I act in this world. What are the motivators? What are the factors which drive me to act in this world? That person not only becomes aware of the Supreme Consciousness, he becomes aware of his own self, he becomes aware of his all actions. So now he becomes master of his domain. He is now in complete control. So as Swamiji points out that the person who has realized he does not become a stone or completely useless to this world. He has become more efficient, more effective, and more in control of his world and the world of others. Sa Adibhuta Adi Daivam Maam Sa Adi Yagnam Cha Ye Viduhu Prayana kale apichamamti vidu yukta chetasaha. That person who strived to achieve that perfection, purified his mind through meditation, came to identify with that supreme consciousness, realized that myself, my consciousness, is not different than the supreme consciousness. It's the same consciousness functioning through all things and beings and also through me. Sa Adibhutam, he sees the relationship between all the world of objects and that supreme consciousness. Sa Adi Daivam, all the things which make this world of experience possible. Sa Adi Yagnam, and all the experiences, all the transactions of this world. He sees that the supreme consciousness is functioning through all these things, the world of objects world of knowers of the objects and the experiences. Prayana kale apichamam te viduhu yukta chetasa. One who has become steadfast in this knowledge. One who has come to realize that there is nothing that exists other than supreme consciousness and everything that I see is nothing but the manifestation, the representation of the supreme consciousness alone. That supreme consciousness functioning through Maya becomes Ishwara. The Ishwara is in, in charge of this Jagat. 
is in and through every activity, all beings. The Ishwara is functioning through them. Prayana kale apichate maam te vidhu yukta chetasaha. He will detain that knowledge even at the time of death. He will be still steadfast in his mind about his own self as the immortal being. This death will not be able to erase that conviction in his mind and intellect. So Bhagavan gives guarantee that once you have this knowledge, old age or death will become irrelevant. I'll stop right here. If you find this podcast helpful, please support it by donating any amount by going to the episode's website at neilbutt.podbean.com or at chinmayarichmond.org. Thank you. Om Sarve Bhavantu Sukhina Sarve Santu Niramayaha Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Ma Kaschid Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shantihi 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Hiyo